I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. While the transition will inevitably bring pains to many domestic businesses, Ma said China is able to take on all the challenges. As a word of advice, Ma urged entrepreneurs around the world to seize the historic opportunity. That's all for today's English news program. As an AI news anchor under development, I know there is a lot for me to improve. Thank you for being with us. Bye for now. Good morning. I'm going to briefly uh, present uh, the Joint Research Center report on the impact of artificial intelligence on learning, in teaching and education. The report has just been published. So this is part of the Joint Research Center's Science for Policy report series. The report looks uh, the impact of artificial intelligence, uh, the basically the current state of artificial intelligence, uh, what artificial intelligence is about, uh, what are uh, what are its kind of potentials, and specifically from the point of view of uh, educational uh, policy development. I'm um, also uh, I mean you know there is a there are a lot of reports coming out on artificial intelligence. There's a lot of hype. Uh, there are tens of billions of U.S. dollars and euros being invested in research on artificial intelligence. And uh, basically people are saying that it is going to be the next electricity or the next oil and it's going to revolutionize the world in many different ways. In many different ways this is hype and to understand what is real and what's really happening in this area you really need to understand a bit more about what is artificial intelligence really doing. But the executive summary really could be, uh, also the motivation for the report could be summarized very briefly. I'm saying this policy foresight report suggests that in the next uh, years AI will change learning, teaching and education. The speed of technical change will be very fast and it will create high pressure to transform educational practices, institutions and policies. And I'm saying that it is therefore important to understand the potential impact of artificial intelligence on learning, teaching and education, as well as on policy development. When we read about future visions about AI, it may sometimes be confusing because, in fact, there are three different types of AI. Historically, uh, logic-based or symbol-based AI was the dominant one. The idea was that uh, human cognition is about logical reasoning and computers are able to do that uh, beyond just simple computation. So computers in a way could be like human brains. This view was kind of um, became outdated towards the 1970s when it was realized that actually we need a lot of knowledge about our environment before we can do any kind of reasoning. The recent uh, news articles about artificial intelligence and the, the hype around AI is based on what I'm calling data-based approach for AI. This has its origins in biological neural networks. In 19 1930s, the first neural network models were created. They became popular around 1950s, went away, became popular again in 1980s, went away, and recently became extremely popular again. So these are now called artificial neural networks, uh, also deep learning networks. These data-based uh, AI systems use widely statistical methods and machine learning methods. So whenever you see AI slash machine learning, this is a type of system that people are talking about. A famous system of this kind was Frank Rosenblatt's perception uh, in 1950s. And it was uh, aimed to uh, do image recognition, letters and, and things like that. And it was informed by uh, and influenced by biological neural networks. So the idea was that there are many kind of computational units linked to each other 
and the weight, uh, how much these uh, different units influence each other, is learned from the data. Current uh, neural networks are very similar, except that they have very many more layers of these artificial neurons. And each layer actually has very, very many computations happening at the same time. So these require extremely uh, efficient parallel uh, processors to be operated. So where are we now? Uh, in fact, there has been a artificial intelligence breakthrough in the last years. And this is because of machine learning. Machine learning uh, is a different paradigm for programming computers. Uh, you don't actually tell uh, step by step the algorithm how to transfer the, translate or transform the input data to output data, but you tell what is the objective and you learn the algorithm uh, using examples from the data. This often requires very many examples. So, for instance, one of the uh, important image databases that has been used to develop these systems uh, uh, was actually compiled by almost 50,000 people uh, from 167 countries who uh, sorted 14 million images. So when, they, when each uh, person saw an image uh, that had a cat or a dog or a car, they labeled it as a cat or a dog or a car. This progress can well be seen in this uh, image recognition uh, competition chart that shows the winner uh, system uh, during the years. In uh, 2012 there was a major improvement uh, in the image recognition. So the database contains, in this case, a uh, thousand different uh, categories of images, cats, dogs, and all kinds of objects, and the system has to recognize those. Uh, if, it's, if it finds um, uh, the right, the correct uh, object in the top five uh, um, predictions it gives, uh, this is counted in this picture. You can see that in 2012 there was a major improvement when artificial neural networks were introduced uh, in this competition. And since then the image recognition capability has increased uh, a lot. Uh, at present, in fact, these systems are uh, better than humans in many well-specified tasks. Uh, there is no general artificial intelligence, so these systems cannot really do anything except uh, very specific tasks. And I will kind of come back to that uh, later. But uh, Video really is the killer app today, so uh, these systems can, uh, can analyze uh, live video well recognize faces and do things like that extremely well. They are also very good at games, which have kind of limited uh, possibilities, uh, limited rules, um, and context does not matter. Uh, they have superhuman human pattern matching capabilities, so for instance, anal analyzing uh, X-ray images, uh, they are very good. Uh, and they can do very good predictions uh, if you have a lot of data and uh, uh, you have to guess uh, based on history what is going to happen next. Uh, these uh, systems are really superhuman in that sense, but only if they have data for training available. One topic that has been uh, very widely discussed uh, is the impact of artificial intelligence on jobs and occupations. So uh, it is also very important for educationalists to understand uh, what the studies in this area say and what they don't say. It is also uh, interesting that uh, educational sciences have actually very much to offer in this area. So many of the econometric studies, for instance, would certainly benefit from uh, contributions from uh, researchers on learning and skill development. But uh, in, in principle, the AI may have four different types of impacts on, on jobs and uh, occupational tasks. They can complement those. 
they can uh, replace them or they can make these obsolete uh, and uh, also create new uh, tasks or jobs. Many of the highly visible studies in this area have been based on, uh, on analyzing uh, tasks and different types of tasks in different occupations um, by looking how easy or difficult these task, tasks would be to automate. A famous study is Frey and Osborne study that uh, used experts in robotics and uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and, and used a US database of occupations and occupational tasks to try to see which of these occupations uh, consist of tasks that can be automated. Uh, a recent uh, kind of review of these studies is always by OECD uh, that looks uh, many of these uh, studies, uh, which also concludes that uh, about one in two occupations or jobs are likely to be significantly affected uh, based on computers, uh, artificial intelligence, robotics in the near future. With uh, some exaggeration, uh, this could mean that uh, every second occupation will be transformed because of AI, current AI technologies. This obviously has implications for education, uh, if education is understood as, as a way of uh, creating competencies and skills for the job market. Many of these studies have been uh, based on on uh, skill-biased technological change models, where the idea is that machines substitute low-skill tasks. That means that education in the, under these conditions uh, should aim for uh, higher level uh, skills, higher level of education and more education. More recently, it has been argued that task-biased technological change models are more appropriate in these models, machines basically substitute routine tasks that are easy to program. And this leads to educational uh, kind of policies that um, emphasize creativity, problem solving, innovation, um, social skills and 21st century skills. AI uh, and its deep learning neural AI models are however different. They are data biased. So if you have data to train these systems, you can actually automate uh, cognitively quite demanding tasks. Uh, this is something that I have not seen anyone to study yet. So in the report, I also describe a brief study that uh, uses exactly the same uh, approach uh, but in this case, I'm looking at the future of teaching profession. So, uh, using the ONET database, that is the US uh, database on occupations and the tasks um, that are related to these occupations and the skills that are related to these tasks, I looked one category, one occupation, middle school teachers from this database and more or less try to guess whether it is easy to use artificial intelligence to automate uh, different tasks of middle school teachers. The list is definitely a very US-centric, does not necessarily reflect the European uh, context, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, it shows that many of the high priority tasks in middle school teacher jobs can relatively easily be automated using current AI systems. This is not a really scientific study, but it kind of illustrates uh, what, what kind of underlies, underpins these uh, econometric studies. On the other hand, it uh, raises the question that if most of the high priority tasks of middle school teachers really can be automated using these current AI systems, whether this reflects the great potential of these technologies that we are already having uh, artificial intelligence capable of doing very complex things or whether it uh, in effect uh, means that uh, currently teachers are uh, 
occupied by very routine and low skill tasks that can relatively easily be automated. In the report I briefly describe uh, the history of AI, where it came from, um, and what kinds of AI there has been. But uh, I'm also trying to provide some um, insights to what computers and AI can do in the future. This is a very interesting area. What are the possibilities and limitations of artificial intelligence systems? And in the report I, I address that uh, to some extent. One starting point is John von Neumann's uh, famous claim that if, if someone just insists that there is something a machine cannot do, if that person just exactly tells what it is, John von Neumann is able to create a computer program that does exactly that. On the other hand, one of the leading current uh, neural AI experts, Andrew Angie, uh, has stated that if a typical person can do a mental task with less than one second of thought, we can probably automate it using AI either now or in the near future. Then it becomes interesting to ask, what are these less than one second tasks? Indeed, uh, the Vygotskyan argument was that all higher level mental capabilities require years of learning. So the advanced forms of human thinking, although they can be uh, very quick after they have been learned, require uh, considerable effort and uh, years of training and learning, often with the help of uh, a more competent person. One way of addressing these questions is by looking learning theories. And I'm here using mainly Vygotskyan uh, activity theory uh, to uh, look uh, artificial intelligence and its capabilities. And in, in activity theory you basically have three different levels of, uh, of analysis of activity. The first is the kind of social and cultural activity level. The next one is the level of acts, which are kind of observable behaviors. And the third one is the operations, that's the kind of implementations or implementation of these behaviors. So different learning theorists have approached these three different levels of analysis um, in different ways. Uh, in this picture you have kind of three different levels. The, on the top you have the kind of cultural level, on the middle you have cognitive level and at the bottom you have the behavioral observable behaviors. Behaviorism, uh, Skinner and others were focusing on really the observable behavior, Piaget and others on the more science conceptual uh, level and uh, then uh, Vygotsky and for instance Freire on the cultural impact, uh, either how culture makes us, that was the question for Vygotsky in a way, and how we make the culture, that was the kind of uh, Freirean view. In this uh, tree-level model, it's quite easy to map uh, the different types of artificial intelligence. So, for instance, the symbol processing AI really focused on cognitive manipulation of, of concepts and symbols. Uh, the deep learning and uh, current neural AI networks uh, focus on the behavioral level. So this is really um, associative learning, uh, something that uh, insects can do also very well. But uh, the learning models that are currently used in neural AI really are on this bottom level. So instead of calling it artificial intelligence, uh, we might well call it artificial instinct. And there is not uh, any easy way to climb up this hierarchy using these current AI systems. So the speculations about superhuman AI really um, don't look very convincing if put into the context of learning theories. 
What I've been saying here is that it is important to understand artificial intelligence uh, when doing policy. So educators need to be aware of uh, the possibilities and also the capabilities of artificial intelligence. There will be a lot of commercial players uh, pro providing solutions to existing problems in the educational system, but uh, educators should focus on the context of the future of education and future needs. AI will transform occupations and this will have an impact on educational systems. Neural artificial intelligence systems will be used for student assessment, automatic test generation and many other things like real-time monitoring of learner behavior, even emotions. So ethics of education will become a very hot topic in many countries, certainly in Europe. As I explained in the report, current AI systems are essentially mechanisms and they cannot explain their behavior. It will be therefore very important to keep humans in the decision-making loop. The systems also make predictions only based on history and, and aggregate data. Uh, because of that, they cannot see anything that is really creative or without precedent. This creates ethical problems and it also can limit uh, the possibilities of humans to express their agency uh, and develop and learn. From learning theory's point of view, machine learning uh, might be called an oxymoron. Uh, there is very little learning, uh, there's very much adaptation. So whatever these systems see, how they see the world, is repetition of the past. They only can see what they have been taught to see. To illustrate, this is an image of Lev Vygotsky, uh, as seen through a state-of-the-art image recognition system. So I drilled down to the brain of this Google inception architecture, and this is how it sees Lev Vygotsky. So obviously, uh, AI will have interesting and important policy implications and uh, this report uh, tries to provide some material for you uh, to think about those and, and unfortunately i'm not able to be there uh, in real time so i created this video for you um, and i want to thank you for your attention for further information i'm obviously available thank you